Representative Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will sponsor you? Yes, sir. You know, I, I'm just trying to think of an example. You know, is do we have problems with flash mobs in Dresden? Because I, I, we don't have them. We don't have them here in Davidson County. I'm just wondering if it's maybe a Dresden or a Green Gleason or Greenfield kind of thing. Could you give me an example of of what what you're trying to address here? You know that we need to correct. Um, I think we've supplied sufficient explanation of what we're trying to correct. Um, and although I can't say that, yeah, this is a rampant problem in Dresden, Tennessee, I think a lot of times we pass laws in Tennessee for, for a couple of different reasons, sometimes to curtail an activity that we uh, wish not to occur here, and sometimes in response to activities that have occurred that we wish would not. Well, you know, and I think we have many learned attorneys in here. From all the instances you've given, I think we've already got laws on the books addressing all of those. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what we're trying to, you know, I think we've got a solution here, but I'm trying to find the problem we're trying to solve. Hey, give me an example somewhere in the United States that we'd all recognize that this has happened, that, you know, there's not a law already on the books to address that crime. You know, if you, if you go into a retail establishment and you damage the goods, you've committed a crime. If you're there trespassing, you've committed a crime. So what, what are we trying to solve? What we're trying to do is to make sure that the uh, crime of vandalism extends to those who knowingly organize, coordinate, control, supervise, finance, or manage uh, the commitment of the act of vandalism. And what we also do is we advance the crime of vandalism to an aggravated vandalism when we talk about polluting the product of a retail establishment. And to answer your other question, um, we have um, situations that have occurred in uh, Lilburn, Georgia, Bozeman, Montana, Glendale, Arizona, uh, Port St. Lucia, uh, Florida, and there's other documented cases around the country also, but not limited to uh, Chicago, Illinois as well. So, so what you're saying, this addresses those, those organized crime syndicates that focus on vandalism. I, I've, I've been unaware of the organized crime that's, you know, behind vandalism, but uh, what, what organizations, since it's organized, what organizations are we trying to, you know, stop here? Because there seems to be a purpose for this, and we're just trying to find the purpose. Um, I think there's uh, several different groups that, that this could have an effect on. I don't think there's any one particular type of group that this legislation is focused on by any means. But what we recognize is that uh, organized crime, uh, as we think the mafia or whatever else, that's, that's not the purpose of this particular leg legislation. The, the purpose is, is any group of individuals who would organize themselves to say, you know what, uh, if I go in here and I try to take something or if I vandalize something and there's just one of me, there's a very high likelihood that I'm going to be caught and I'm going to be apprehended. If 12 or 14 of us go in and do the same thing, there's a very high likelihood that a great number of us can be in the process of vandalizing, taking product or whatever the case may be, and we can get away. And so the organization of that type of crime has a very significant impact on business. What we're trying to do is to make sure that those individuals who would organize, fund, and uh, for all practical purposes try to organize this event so that it can take place would also be charged with a criminal uh, penalty of vandalism. And then when we talk about being in a situation, I don't know what your business is, but um, you know, a number of folks in here who own retail establishments, if, if an effort was made to, uh, to pollute with any number of types of materials the product that you have so that it is not eligible for sale to the general public, I think there's a great number of folks in this, in this uh, chamber today who would be very upset if they found themselves in that situation. Isn't that without, a crime already? It is. The, it's the crime of vandalism, but it's not aggravated vandalism, and that's what this legislation would do. It, was, it increased the, the crime associated with polluting the product of a, of a retail establishment. Well, you keep, you know, I take the code very seriously, and adding additional things to the code that we don't need, you know, then we, I think we, I think we added a position last year to clear out the clutter in the code, and I think, you know, we're adding something that we don't need you keep talking about organized, organized, 
I, I just want to know one of these organizations that's such a menace to society that we've got to add this into the code. It doesn't have to be a named organized group. This, this can be, this can be uh, an organization of, of any number of people who just get together 10 minutes before they participate in this type of crime, and that would justify, in my mind, organization. So that would be the, so that would lead to the aggravated vandalism in your in your bill. That's incorrect. If they went in and they and they use some type of pollutant on the product, that would be aggravated vandalism. For, but as I said, that's already a crime. I, you know, I I just think everything's already been addressed in the code that's in your bill, and you know we'll we'll have to you know get. You know, the position we create. What was the position last year we created to clear the clutter? The what? The repealer. We'll, we'll, we'll need the repealer to come and, and look at this and, uh, you know, see, well, this wasn't really needed. But thank you for your response. Thank you.